Hi there guys, I thought I'd do a video today just reviewing the backpack that I use. And here it is right here, you've probably seen it in a number of videos and if you haven't it's a Maxpedition Condor 2 in foliage green. And they're fantastic packs and I've owned this one for around about three years now I think. And it's been a very reliable companion to take out in all kinds of weather conditions. And um, yeah, it's really served me well. But I've made a number of modifications to it, like this flap here and various other buckles and bits that I've put on it. And I thought today I'd just do a video covering just this pack. Um, not, not the content, but maybe talk a bit about what I put in each pouch and how much it can hold and the capacity and the materials that it's made of, how waterproof it is, you know, all these different things that you, you kind of want to know when you buy a pack. And obviously the stitching as well, which is very important. So one of the major changes I made to the pack was this front flap. And I think it's something that I get asked quite a few questions about, you know, how it's attached and where did it come from? And, uh, and I'll explain how it's fitted and everything in a moment. But where it came from was I owned like a, one of those Maxpedition sort of man bag type things. I think it's called a Fat Boy um, or Versa pack. And uh, I was at work and it was sitting on top of another bag and we had a fire going and it just rolled off. It mustn't have been on the pack and it must have been gradually kind of deforming because of the weight. It rolled off and part of it rolled onto the fire, the, the bottom of the Versa pack. And I remember kind of hearing something, you know, because I was about 20 yards away and just took no notice of it. And after a while, obviously going over to the fire because it stank of burning plastic, um, you know, it was in the fire and it was burnt and it was ruined and the bottom of it had completely been destroyed. So I stamped on it and decided when I got home I'd salvage pieces from it to make other things with. And that's just, this is where this front flap came from. And I'll show you how it's fitted. So this clip down here, this, this was already on the Maxpedition Condor 2 and it connected to the yoke. And the yoke, the sort of V-type yoke, came from just here, beneath this sort of grab handle. And I decided to, um, to cut that because I didn't really want it anymore. And what I found was, is I'm out in the rain a lot and, and I had things in this compartment. And I found the rain was just hitting this zip and just soaking in and I'd have lots of water in this front compartment here and I thought well you know I'm going to put this flap down because I'd quite like somewhere to, to keep my notebook as well and um, you know I find it quite useful just putting things in there and it's just quite quite a nice addition really not all this is about function and you know obviously there's an element of aesthetics there as well as there is with anything um, but you can see how this is connected if we open the bag here you'll see the zip is is just here and it's just stitched just underneath, you can see there, and it's not particularly great, but you can pick the whole pack up with it. It's just stitched kind of two or three times to make it, you know, really strong. And uh, I've done the same thing with this notebook holder. I think this is the four by six notebook holder. And you can see I've just literally stitched about three or four times in four different places, one, two, three, four, through the, um, the top flap and then through the pack again. And I've done the same just here, just stitched literally a, a, a continuous loop through just to hold it on and you know and it's pretty strong it doesn't need to withstand too much but I often keep my notebook in here and various other notes and things sometimes a wild edibles guide if I'm going out and you know I can't remember some things and there's something on there that I want to want to investigate a bit further. Another item that I got off the Versa pack was this strap here or this cushion I should say a strap cushion and on the Versa pack, you have a large strap that goes all the way over your shoulder and this goes on it to stop it cutting into your shoulder. And I wanted a little bit of cushioning on the, um, the waistband on the Condor 2 and I thought, well, this should be perfect. So I cut it in half and then stitched it to stop it fraying anymore and just sort of burnt it off where the nylon was uh, to stop it fraying. And it fits quite nicely. You do have to cut it in half quite carefully. But again, it's something I managed to salvage off of a Versa pack, and it does add an element of comfort when it's around your waist. What I've got here is a Maxpedition tack tie, and this is effectively Maxpedition's answer for attaching pouches to Molle. I think there are better ones around, but these do serve a purpose if you do end up possessing some and you don't know what to do with them and you're not using them to connect pouches to your kit, which I certainly don't use them for. They're not bad, there's just there's better ones around that are much cheaper. But I've weaved it in between the mole there, as you can see, and it's just provided with me with sort of like a temporary vertical bit of mole to connect my dump pouch to. And uh, I don't have my dump pouch here 
on this sort of belt simply because it gets in the way of the movement of my arms and it's really annoying. So being able to temporarily clip, uh, clip it there means I can wear my pack and actually put things in it comfortably and have it fully expanded and it doesn't get in the way of my arm movement. But it also means I can take this off and put this on my belt kit or on, clip it on my belt and go and do a bit of foraging and put my pack down as well as put wild game in it. This part here, this Grimlock, it, it, it's not as standard with the dump pouch. The dump pouches come with these clips here that we talked about earlier, but they have a tendency to break, so the Grimlock really does make it a bit more versatile and a lot stronger. The dump pouch is mirrored on the other side as well as the tactile, as well as the strap, as you can see. And these are the medium-sized dump pouches, which I think are perfect, really, that the huge ones are a bit too big and the small ones are a little bit too small unless you want to put a canteen kit in. As standard on the Condor 2, you have four compression straps, although I suppose you could say that's five if you keep the original Y type thing on. Well, this flap does function as a compression strap, um, but not quite as effective as the original. But you've got these compression straps here and the top ones I use, I don't use the bottom ones because the pack's usually quite well padded out at the base. Um, you can see it's just tucked in behind these pouches here. And I've kept the buckle, as you can see there, but I've just tied it off because I may want to use it again in the future because all this comes off and it's all kind of quite modular. At the top of the pack here I've got a grim lock as I have on the other side mirrored again. And that just is quite useful really for clipping all manner of things, bits of kit, equipment, keys to your car, whatever you like really. You know, it's up to you and your imagination. But I have put a drawstring just there and that is really useful. I ended up coming across lots of these little Maxpedition toggles and various other toggles off the Versa pack and other bits of kit that I don't use. And um, it's really good, for example, the other day I went out and picked lots of wild mint and they've got quite a long thick stem and you can kink them over and just tie them on and just carry lots of mint on you, like wild edibles or bits of equipment like a, a sort of towel that might be wet or a bit of gear that might be damp and you don't want it in the pack so you can draw string, string it on. If we look at this front compartment here, um, you can see there are some changes that have been made. And these sort of buckles and this strapping and this equipment here, they came off this Maxpedition Jarnus pouch. I've got two Jarnus pouches here, and you can see I just use them as side pouches, compartments for my pack. And occasionally they come off and go on my belt, or at least the medical one does there anyway. You don't really need these kind of buckle type things on there when they're on the side of your pack, so I took them off because I never use them and just put them on the front. And it's just quite useful for gripping extra kit there. At the base of the pack again I've, I've just added a couple of Grimlocks. On the standard pack you have some straps that, that come along here and they sort of fasten on and you can fit things on there but they're not very big and you probably can only fit a really small sleeping mat like a foam roll mat or sleeping bag on there. What I've actually got in the pack is two very long webbing straps. I went on eBay and bought lots of this webbing here, this foliage green webbing which you can get from the States. Put some buckles on that I bought and now I've got a huge strap that I can just thread through here and through the Grimlock if I want to secure it even more and fit an enormous sleeping bag on there, which is something I do quite a lot. And it just gives me a lot more leeway, but I don't want them to be there when I'm not using it because they absorb water and they just end up getting covered in mud when I put it on the ground. So I take them off and keep them in the pack until I need them. You can see the pack is pretty mirrored. I've got four pouches on the side and really pouches I think are quite important simply because of the limitations of capacity. It's not a very big pack at 23 litres. So when going through the winter last year, I had sort of a bit of trouble with it. And I thought, you know, this pack is just not big enough for me. But adding these pouches onto the side and thinking about it a bit more strategically and what I'm taking with me. For example, I used to carry an enormous amount of tinder on me and I thought, well, why have I got all this tinder? You know, there's so much birch bark out there. There's crample fungus, there's tons of material. I know how to use it. I just need a ferro rod. So I just started carrying a ferro rod and I've never really had any issues making a fire. So immediately the tinder pouch is now gone and I've got plenty more space in other pouches. So just thinking about what you need and, and planning food correctly and clothing correctly, you know, underlayers fold up really thin and um, really the outer shell would remain the same like a woolen jumper or a fleece jumper and then a sort of shell over the top of that to keep you dry and allow you to breathe a bit. And all that can go on for prolonged periods of time and you can wash your clothing in the river and strap it on the outside if you're on the go. And it really does work quite well and this pack has served me really well. 
You can see the Maxpedition Condor 2 comes with these two front pouches which are as standard and they're very useful and you can fit an awful lot in them provided you pack them right. You know, saving the internal capacity of the pack really does help in the winter especially when you're sort of putting a lot of clothes in there and sleeping equipment things that you know are going to insulate you and keep you warm and you want all the other tools and other bits and bobs and you know to kind of exist on the outside. This bottom pouch here contains all my cooking gear and various food as well if I can fit it in and other bits and bobs that I might want to take with me. You can see I've got a lid there, I've got something to drain the sap of trees and also act as a, a candle and you can drop a wick in it if you have it at the right angle. This was given to me by a friend of mine who saw me make a hash of tapping a tree. I've got a spork there as well which is, um, which is pretty useful and that just fits in there. And I've got the plate which I recently did a video on slash frying pan which fits in the back. So really nice to have all your cooking gear in there and a titanium cup and uh, also a Geink Design stainless steel bottle. The internal capacity of the bag is, is very very useful and uh, my sleeping bag resides on the base as we discussed earlier in a dry bag um, and in here goes lots and lots of other things so um, you've got like a zipper pocket that comes as standard as well, a mesh pocket and I generally keep like a, a slingshot in there which I really enjoy using and, and hunting with when I get the opportunity. Um, but you can put whatever you like in there obviously, you, know, you can put seasonings and all kinds of things. My uh, Granfus Brooks uh, wildlife hatchet lives on the side inside the pack. Um, you know I don't, I don't generally have it on the outside of the pack but again you've got some good capacity there for an axe. Even got a sleep mat in there and uh, that just sits at the back and it's nice and comfortable packed at the back because it goes against my back and stops things in the pack kind of pushing into me. Um, and I've got a tarp at the base as well, a tarp just here. Um, this is a 3x3 DD tarp but I wasn't going to go into what I've got in there because I will at a later, later date. But you can see there you have got some good capacity and you've also got a slip there. Maybe you want to put some books or something in there while you're out, like a field guide or your field guide or a journal or food or whatever and you can pack quite a bit in there. You do have a zipper compartment at the back and in there I've actually got this hard piece of foam which stops things interfering with my back. If you do want to put a hydration system in there you can just put one in there and there's also some corresponding velcro like material where I think you know you see on the adverts you've got handguns and stuff put in there obviously that's not an option for me but I don't have a hydration system and I opt for a canteen but if you do want one you can feed the pipe through comes out of this velcro kind of hatch at the top and can go through one of these eyelets and you can drink whilst you're on the go but just bear in mind it will take up internal capacity with this kind of baffle that's in there as you can see at the back. I went to Norway recently and I, and I will do a video on, on the travels there as I've got a bit of footage and stuff and it was a really great trip going up in to the mountains and stuff and you know wild camping for so many days and hiking and it was a brilliant trip and um, I found some fantastic fungus as well. Always wanted to find horses hoof fungus and chaga fungus and that was a first for me. I've read about them, I've, I've handled them, never found them in the wild on the tree and used them as tinder and also used them to carry fire as well from one, one place to another. So it was really fantastic to, to be able to do that. But I didn't take this pack with me and I took a much bigger pack. Um, I couldn't tell you the name of it, although I will put it in the description when I get hold of it again. I borrowed it off my brother. And I do kind of wish I'd taken this pack because when I got there I planned for very cold weather and I didn't really know what to in in expect in terms of the environment so I overpacked and I didn't pack very well. I took some good, good equipment with me but I was carrying about £40 of kit which to be honest with you was far too much gear, it really was too much gear. There were lots of resources that could have been utilised in the area and that were used and, to make life very comfortable. And really all that was necessary was a tarp and basic sleeping gear and I could have just taken this with me and done very well with the clothes I had because we ended up washing in streams a lot of the time and drying our clothes around the fire by thermal walls which reflected the heat and kept a little eddy of heat going that you know, dried your clothes within a day. So it was pretty good, the only thing you needed to take was, was food really um, because of the, you know, the nature of the trip. So this video has just been about the Maxpedition Condor 2 and you know as it is a standard and the changes I've made kind of psychology that goes behind it and why I chose it and who it may apply to and you know it's its pros and its cons. Um, obviously it's a very small pack so you know the downsides are it's 
not going to appeal to everyone. It's got a military kind of look, which may not appeal to everyone. The zips aren't waterproof, so in very heavy rain, um, the zips will take on water and your kit will get wet inside. So either an internal dry bag or a shell is required for heavy rain, light rain, it's okay. Um, it's a very strong, it's abrasive resistant. They look new forever, the Maxpedition products I find machine washable on 50 degrees. I've chucked it in the wash with all sorts of stuff and washed it when it's been covered in mud. So it's a great pack, it's reliable, none of the stitching has come loose yet and I've had it for three years and used it, you know, almost all over the place. It's a fantastic pack and, uh, you know, worth 120 quid if you're going to keep it for a very long time and get a lot of use out of it. But obviously it's, uh, you know, it's got some downsides as well. So I hope this video has helped and I have been tagged by a friend of mine in Alaska so to do a kit review of, of all the gear that I have in there and how it all goes together. So we'll be doing that pretty soon. But thanks for watching and I hope this video has helped and hopefully I'll see you in the next vid. Cheers guys.